Hello and welcome to Thought for the Day. My name's Nick Weir and today we're continuing looking at this little book of Jude and I'm going to pray for us as we start. Heavenly Father, please open our eyes to see wonderful things in your word today. We ask this in Jesus' name and for our good. Amen. If you've been with us, you might remember how Jude started his little letter to the church. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. We've been seeing this need to, to battle uh, for the content of the faith, uh, that we stay faithful. But how do we go about contending? I don't know about you, but I'd rather prefer to avoid uh, conflict or anything that might lead to Christian disunity. Well, this final part of Jude's little letter tells us how to contend. And today we're going to look at the first bit, uh, which is verse 20 and 21. And we're going to see here a little surprise for us. Let me uh, share uh, those verses with us. Here it is. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. The first way to contend is to make sure that we have healthy faith ourselves. We're quite capable, you see, often of spotting faults in others, spotting uh, when they fail, uh, when they get tangled up. But it's so easy to do that and not to notice uh, the problems inside our own selves, the immorality in ourselves. Well, these four verbs in Jude 20 and 21 are here to help us. First, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Most holy reminds us that our faith is a gift from God. It is special. We need to see it as such a precious thing that we want to grow in our faith, be strengthened uh, in it. But how can we build our faith? Well, a major way to be built up in faith is to be built by the faith. And there's, I'm sure in this verse, a link back to that verse three that I read from before. The faith, uh, the gospel that was proclaimed by the apostles, that builds us up in faith. And notice this verse is written in plural. We do this building together. Now, Christian faith is, of course, a very personal thing, but it should never remain just personal and private. God calls us to belong to his people. And much of our building up is done together in a church meeting, in small groups or through friendships. And it's why lockdown has been such a challenge to Christians as we've been in danger of isolation. So first, build. Second, pray. It was the great 16th century church reformer, John Calvin, who defined prayer as the chief exercise of faith and by which we daily receive God's benefits. By the Holy Spirit, we can approach the throne of God's grace boldly and call on our Father in prayer. And that is how we receive his blessings day by day. As, as James, the uh, uh, writer, says, if you, you do not have because you do not ask, what a wonderful blessing prayer is for our faith. Third, keep. Keep yourselves in God's love. And in the Greek grammar of this sentence, this is the, 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 the verb with the most emphasis. At the beginning of the letter of Jude, we are promised that God will keep us. And at the end, also, it promises that too. But that doesn't mean that we have no human responsibility. We also ought to keep ourselves, knowing that as we keep ourselves, God's mighty hand is on us. So we need to take ourselves in hand. And we need to heed these warnings about the false teachers because they're teaching that grace doesn't mean you have to live a holy life. 
And so a big way to keep ourselves from this kind of thinking is to, is to keep away from this thinking and to pursue the holy life that God's true grace calls us to. God saved us because he wants to change us. So uh, the third thing then, in, and the big thing is we need to keep ourselves. And finally, wait. Wait for the mercy of Jesus Christ to bring us eternal life. Salvation has a future perspective. We are waiting for final salvation. The false teachers are offering us pleasure now, but the best is yet to come. We are waiting for mercy. You see, we're not any better than these false teachers. We are sinners in need of mercy. And for the full experience of that, we must wait. God doesn't deal with all evil straight away. In his wisdom, he let the world go on. We can see that so clearly, can't we, with the COVID pandemic. It teaches us patience. We still live as sinners in a world and a church full of sinners. But one day, salvation is coming. So we need to wait. Build, pray, keep and wait. If we are going to go out and contend for the faith, we first need to keep ourselves in that faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to hear these wonderful words of Jude, to build, to pray, to keep and to wait on you and strengthen us today through this. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to have shared this with you. Thank you.